And it's really that simple. You can option drag to make a track faster or slower, and then we can use a pitch shifter to retune it to be back in the key that we want. Hello YouTube, today I'm going to be showing you how to slow down, speed up, or otherwise change the speed of audio files in Logic Pro. First thing that we need to talk about is the tempo. The tempo is how many beats per minute that the session is set to. For example, if our track is set to four beats, this means there are going to be four beats which have a value of one quarter note per measure. If you have 120 of those beats per minute, that's going to be much faster than if you have 80 beats per minute. I've got this Apple loop here, and let's go ahead and play it at 120 beats per minute. I'm going to click it, command U to put a cycle over that so it'll loop. Now, if we take a look in our browser, you can see that the tempo for this file is 120 beats per minute. However, something cool about Apple Loop specifically is if we change the tempo, you're gonna notice that this isn't changing its length within the timeline. So if we go down to 80 beats per minute, it's automatically playing much slower. Now let's see what happens if we bring in a third party sample. Here's a random audio sample that I believe I got off of Splice. You can see the, the default tempo that this was recorded at is 126. You'll notice that when we increase the tempo, you actually see the region growing and shrinking. That's because Logic isn't smart enough to take this non-Apple loop sample and automatically stretch it. So what to do? Let's say we want to take this 126 BPM sample and play it in an 80 BPM track and have it fill two measures. What we can do is go over to the right side. You'll see the cursor start to change. And I'm going to go ahead and hold Option. And you'll see that the cursor changes to this new kind of icon. And what we can do is manually drag the file to fit in that smaller space. That's going to speed up the sample. We can do the same thing in the other direction and make it longer, really drag it out. So you can really stretch these files out and get this almost kind of granular synthesis effect. Now here's another problem. When we speed a track up, it's actually going to change the pitch. When you speed up, the pitch is going to become higher, and when you slow down, the pitch is going to be lower. Now, this has to do with the physics of audio. Audio is all just wavelengths, and when you squish these wavelengths smaller and smaller, you're actually changing the audio frequency as well, which is going to increase or decrease the pitch. If we want to stretch a sample to fit a different tempo, but keep the pitch information, we might have to get a little bit creative. In Logic, we've got this stock pitch shifter plugin located under the pitch category. You'll notice that we have both semitones and sense and a mix knob. I'm going to go ahead and put the mix all the way to 100. And let's try and just use our ears and put this to the original pitch. Maybe let's get a more pitched sample as an example. Let's go ahead and find the pitch of this. Looks like it's on A flat. Let's just double check that. That sounds right. So we're going to be shooting for an A flat here. Let's try shrinking the audio down. By speeding up our track, we have actually increased the pitch by just about two semitones from an A flat before we sped it up to a B flat. So what we can do is take our pitch shifter plugin and decrease those semitones by two, and we should get back to that original A flat pitch. We can also adjust at the scent level, and a scent is one one hundredth of a pitch, so we have 50 to the semitone below, 50 to the semitone above. If we needed to go you know, to 75, we would go up one and down 25, but we can get very, very precise with the pitch. Similarly, if we want to speed up and get back to that A-flat that the original recording is in, let's stretch it out a little bit more. Sounds like we're right around a G, which means we've gone, we've stretched enough to go down one semitone, so all we have to do is bump up. This one's a little bit off. Looks like we need to go a little bit up on the sense. Let's try around 25. A little bit less, maybe. 
And that sounds pretty close to me. And it's really that simple. You can option drag to make a track faster or slower. And then we can use a pitch shifter to retune it to be back in the key that we want. And of course, maybe we want it to sound very slow and distorted or very long and granular sounding. It really depends what you're trying to go for. Now let's go back to our special Apple loop, which is smart enough to retime itself. Now you'll notice that we can't manually retune these Apple loops. What we are going to have to do is bounce them in place to get a new audio region that isn't an Apple loop, and then we're able to retime them just like those third party samples. And that is just about it in this quick tutorial on how to retime audio in Logic Pro 10. I hope this was helpful. Be sure to leave any questions down in the comments below. Like the video if you found it helpful. Subscribe for more Logic and music production tutorials. And until next time, I hope you have a wonderful morning, evening, night, day, whenever you may be watching this. Bye.